Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. Today, we're going to learn about how one wrong character can break your VBA code in your Microsoft Access database. This is part 59 of my fitness database series, but even if you don't care about fitness, that doesn't matter. This is about building a database with lots of cool tips and tricks, and today's lesson is no different. We're going to learn about something called integer division. If you're not familiar with it, we're going to go over it in a little more detail than we did in yesterday's video. And we're also going to go over some weird formatting stuff that happens in the forms when you try to format it with stuff. So here we go. Starting off today, we've got a comment from one of my members, Barto Spivak5755, who posted on YouTube. It's a comment about yesterday's video, Fitness 58 where we're doing military time. And if we take a number like 455, we want to figure the hours out, we divide it by 100, right? And that should give us the four. Barto specifically says uh, correctly here, uh, since H is a long integer, if you do H equals L divided by 100, it will round up, right, to five. Now the issue here literally boils down to one character. And if you know what it is, post a comment down below. And here I'll give you my code for reference. It's right in here it's in the after update event. All right, there's my code. And let me put them side by side here. There's Bartos code. Do you see what the character difference is? Do you see what that one character is? See, it's right there. I used a backslash instead of a forward slash. And I even mentioned it briefly in the video. Right, right here, about 732 in the video. So the H, the hours, is going to be L integer divide, not this guy. That's regular divide. We want integer division 100, right? So 730 becomes 7. We're basically dividing it by 100 and ignoring any remainder. That's what integer division is. I cover integer division and modulus and all that in my Access Expert Level 26 class. It's one of the more advanced math functions, all this kind of cool stuff. All right, so now I got, that, I got the hours out of it. How do I get the minutes part of it? All right, so what's the big deal? What's the difference between regular division and integer division? Well, with regular division, Barto is right. If you take 100 and divide it by, let's, let's say you got, uh, let's say you got this 455 here, you divide that by 100, it will see the 55 and round it up, right? But with integer division, it doesn't, it just truncates it, chops it right off. So the 455 becomes a four. Then you use the modulus to get the other part of it, the part that was chopped off. So you'll get the 55 here, okay? And so this is a perfect example of how Literally one character, not even one line of code, one character can change your code, all right? And yeah, I, I get it. That was easy to miss. Sorry if I didn't go over it in detail. Doing a search on my website, I don't have a specific video for integer division for tech help. I, I mentioned I covered it in a, one of my expert level classes. I'll probably put together a tech help video on it, but I do talk about it in my odd or even video. If you wanna go watch this, it's got, uh, it covers that and it covers the modulus operator. So excellent question and thanks for posting it. All right, next up, now that I've been using the food log for months now, well, not months, but a long time. Yeah, it might be months, it might be months. Um, I find myself, whenever I come to want to add something, like what did I have to, oh, today I had some Miracle Whip. I had a turkey BLT and I, put, I wanted to put a little bit, I know Miracle Whip is awful <laughs> health-wise, but I had just one tablespoon of it. And yes, I measured it out, um, but I didn't have it in my food table. So when I went to the food list, I, it, I notice that it's, it normally starts down here at the tab order. Now, you could set the tab order easily in form design, right? If you come in here to form design, you guys all know how to do this, right? Go to form design, tab order, and here's, you can set the tab order. Now the tab order always starts in the detail section. Okay, why is it starting now down here in the food group ID when I open up this form? Why is it doing that? Well because the first field in the tab order is this guy and we put code in there. So when we click up here, it jumps down there. Remember that? Cause I don't want people clicking up here and trying to think that they can edit stuff up here. We did this in one of the previous lessons and that's okay. I like that. But when I open up this food list lately, right? I'm finding myself always wanting to search. Usually I'm, I'm in here. I'm, I'm looking for something. Let me move this up so you can see it. I come in here, I'm looking for like Miracle Whip. Let's say I'm, I'm MIR. Let's say I don't find it, right? 
I want to add it. So I go over here to the food list, and the first thing it pops me down here is onto the, the food group, which I don't want that. So when, the, when I open this guy, I want to have the focus start there in that search box. Okay? You can't do that without a little code because it's going to try to put it in the detail section. And it's our other code that's jumping it down there. So we want the focus to start in the food description filter box, right? And we're going to put that in the forms on load or on open event. I already got something on load in here. We'll do that first. So we'll come in right in here. Boop. All right. And right before we do this me.timer interval business, we'll come in here and we'll say food description filter dot set focus. That should start us off there. And let's close it. And now we'll open it. And perfect, there it is. And now I can come up here and look for Miracle Whip. And oh, there's Miracle Whip. I have it already. It's these little customizations that I think really make the, the database, you know, better. Right? It's the little things. And it's the little details like that sometimes I don't cover in my full course because I'm trying to cover the big picture items. And that's what the tech help videos are for, all these little edge cases, right? Another thing I want to change, I had some lettuce. Now an entire head of lettuce, like romaine or iceberg, right, is about 75 calories. Okay, I had like one big piece of lettuce from a, off of a, an iceberg lettuce head, so I put like 0.1. But that, of course, gives me fractions down here. I really don't care about fractions of a calorie or fractions of a gram of protein. So let's format all of this stuff to zero decimal places. And yeah, this is the stuff you guys probably already know how to do, but it's good review and it's good in teaching you about polishing this stuff. Now I'm going to highlight all these guys and we're just going to go to format and say decimal places is zero instead of auto. Now this brings up a big uh, question. Oh, see now there you go. See, it didn't, it didn't format those properly. Why is that? See, look, if we come in here, those are all set to decimal places zero. We also need to put a format in there. Now, how do you want this to look formatted wise? I'm going to say pound sign, comma, pound sign, pound sign, zero. Just like that. All right, save it. Let's close it, open it, and there we go. Now, let me explain what that was, just for those of you who aren't familiar with the pounds or with the, with the format here. I'll zoom in so you can see this better. Okay. Now I got a whole separate video on formatting numbers. Here's that video if you guys are interested and want to learn more. And I cover it in a bunch of my courses. Like a lot of people ask me like, well, what course covers blah, right? Whatever topic. Well, sometimes a specific topic is covered in a lot of different courses. Like something like, you know, table properties. Well, what cover, what, what course covers all the table properties? Well, I don't cover them all in one class because there's table properties for beginners and there's table properties for experts. And there's table properties for developers. So it's, you know, it's spread out. I don't have like one course that teaches everything about queries. But anyways, what this means is put a number here if one exists in that place. If there is a thousands number, put one there. All right, but it's optional. This one's optional. This one's optional. This one is not. You must always put a number in this spot, in the ones spot. But if you got tens, hundreds, and thousands, and this, can, this will carry on too. What this specific format says is I want to see the numbers comma separated, right? But I only really care about the first one unless there are more numbers than show them. Basically is what this is saying. This is the default for thousands if you want a thousands separator, okay? And since I specified zero decimal places, you won't get a decimal. If you want to force a decimal, do that. And obviously you have to put one decimal place up top, okay? So there's that and that will give you the format that you want. Now, what I was going to say earlier was, this brings up another question is, are you sure you want to show a rounded number there? Like up here, you might want to leave it so it's not rounded, right? And then just round and, and display the, the rounded off number at the bottom. I go over this a lot when we're dealing with invoicing. One of the things my full course covers in detail is doing uh, invoicing and, and order entry and stuff. And you don't want to fall into the trap where you're rounding off individual items to uh, behind the scenes and then not, and then they don't add up to the, the final product right. Right. If you got a whole bunch of like, let's say, small items that are, you know, there's fractions of a penny, then you run into the Superman three problem. Right. The, the office space problem where they round off all these little tiny fractions of a penny and then they add them all up and then they steal it and they get in trouble and then Superman has to come and save the day. Everyone's familiar with that one. Right. In fact. I got a whole other video on that one. Of course I do, right? <laughs>
Now up here, however, I do want to see just one decimal point if it's allowed. But sometimes, depending on the calculation, you might get the, the, the 3.33333 problem. I don't want to see all that up here. So this I'd like to only display one decimal point if there is a fractional component, not if it's just an integer. All right, how do we do that? Well, you'd think you could just come in here, let's select both of these and put a format in here of pound comma pound pound zero dot pound, right? You'd think that that would work, right? That's what it looks like there. Let me close this up a little bit so you can see it better, there, right? If it exists, if it exists, if it exists, always show the ones place and then a fractional part, if it exists, you'd think that would work. But save it, close it, open it, you get that. You're going to see the period. I don't like that. <laughs> Unfortunately, there's no way to easily put that type of a format in here. Because if you put the dot zero, then you're always going to see that dot zero, which I don't want that either. All right? I only want to see the fractional component if it exists. Well, you can't do that with a simple format. Trust me, I've tried. If you can come up with a solution, I want to know about it. But what we can do is we can round this in the query. Because for this particular example, I don't care about too many fractions of a calorie or too many fractions of a, of a gram of protein. So that total down here on the bottom is close enough for me. If you're doing this with um, order entry, for example, you want to round all your pennies at this level here so that they don't all fractionally add up and get down to the bottom and the number's wrong from what you can see, right? So this is a case where we're going to just round it off in the underlying query. In this case, it is food log Q. So let's go back to the food log Q. Where are you at? There you are. Right click design view. All right. So right here, total calories at this point here, I'm going to round it to one decimal place. Right, and this is going to be round, round of that comma, one decimal place. Right, and if we look at them now, all the total calories should be rounded off to one decimal place. If we have any fractions in here, where are you at? Let's come down to the bottom. Oh, I know someone's got a fraction. Well, someone had a fraction. Where'd you go? I know you're in here somewhere. Well, there, okay, there we go. So they're all, you can see that they're rounded to one fraction, one, one decimal place. And we'll do the same thing with the other calculations. We'll just round protein, right? Round. I'm going to copy that to my clipboard. And we're going to round you. Da, 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 da. Comma one. Did I do comma zero on the other one without thinking about it? I bet you I did. Nope, I just forgot to put anything in there. Comma one. And this guy. Burp. Comma one, there we go. All right, save it, run it here, make sure everything looks good. I wish I could find that one that was crazy. I thought I could, I thought I, maybe I fixed it. Maybe I changed it, the number, so I didn't have to look at that. Okay, looks like everybody's good. But that will avoid that problem up here. Okay. Okay. All right. So that's going to do it for your tech help video for today, folks. I hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up button right now and give me a like. Also, be sure to subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. And make sure you click that bell icon and select all to receive notifications whenever I post a new video. Do you need help with your Microsoft Access project? Whether you need a tutor, a consultant, or a developer to build something for you, check out my Access Developer Network. It's a directory I put together personally of Access experts who can help with your project. Visit my website to learn more. Any links or other resources that I mention in the video can be found in the description text below the video. Just click on that Show More link right there. YouTube's pretty good about hiding that, but it's there. Just look for it. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, tables, all that stuff. It's over four hours long. You can find it on my website or my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? And if you like Level 1, Level 2 is just $1. That's it. 
and it's free for members of my YouTube channel at any level. Speaking of memberships, if you're interested in joining my channel, you get all kinds of awesome perks. Silver members get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, and there's hundreds of them by now. They also get one free beginner class each month, and yes, those are from my full courses. Gold members get the previous perks, plus access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos. Plus, you get access to my code vault, where I keep tons of different functions and all kinds of source code that I use. And gold members get one free expert class every month after completing the beginner series. Platinum members get all of the previous perks, plus they get all of my beginner courses, all of them from every subject, and you get one free advanced or developer class every month after finishing the expert series. And you can become a diamond sponsor and have your name listed on the sponsor page on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time.